Your waitlist can be accessed on your appointments page. You'll notice that it displays as the first operator column. There are two ways that you can add a client to the waitlist. The first way is making the appointment directly into the waitlist column. Simply click a time slot in the waitlist column, then search for the client on the right. If they're a new client, then you will instead click add new client and fill in their details. You'll then be prompted to select their services as normal. Once you hit confirm, the appointment will be made into the waitlist column. Now, you'll notice that the service that was booked in was actually for 60 minutes, but it was shortened to 15 minutes when it was put in the waitlist. The system automatically shortens the appointment so that it only takes up one time slot. This allows you to have lots of space for other waitlist clients. Then, if an operator were to have some free time, you will simply drag and drop the appointment into the appropriate operator column, at which point the service will be extended back to its actual service duration. The next way to add a client to the waitlist is by dragging and dropping an existing appointment into the waitlist column. This will automatically shorten the appointment to fit into just one time slot, so you can fit many appointments into your waitlist column. If the appointment needs to be taken off the waitlist and booked in, simply drag and drop the appointment back into the correct operator column. The service duration will be extended back to normal once it's out of the waitlist column. Something important to note is that any client who is put in the waitlist column will not be sent an appointment reminder. If you move them into an actual operator column before your appointment reminders are set to go out, then they will receive that reminder. Now that you know how to move these appointments around on the same day, you'll need to know how to move them to a different day. The process is just as easy. First, you'll click on the client's name on the appointment. Then, this will bring up the visit details window where you can click move. The waitlist appointment will be copied onto the clipboard to the right. Now, you can go through the dates using the arrows or you can click on the date which will bring up the calendar. If you now have free time for the client's appointment, you will simply click on the appropriate operators column to paste the appointment. If the client is still going to be on the waitlist, then you will simply click a time slot in the waitlist column of the alternate day instead. Now that you know both ways to move appointments, we'll show you a few other things that you should know. If you ever need to view all waitlist clients for the week, simply double tap waitlist. If you need to go back to the normal view, you can double tap it again, otherwise refreshing the page will also go back to the normal view. If you would prefer to name this column something else, then that's definitely possible. For example, you may want to use this as a cancellation column instead of a waitlist column. If that's the case, then you'll need to go to settings, then into appointment settings. Locate the waitlist name option, then enter in the new name in the text box, then save when you're done. If you go back to the appointments page, the column will now display the name that you've changed it to. If a client has previously been put into the waitlist column, you can see this data via your appointments report. Simply go to reporting, into your report list, then into the appointments report. You'll need to adjust the dates, then under the operator filter, select waitlist. If you've changed the name, then whatever you've changed it to will display here instead of waitlist. Click go, then the results will load. As you can see, all the clients who were put into the waitlist column between the date search will be displayed. As always, if you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to our support team by going to help and support then clicking the submit a request button.